Hey everyone, this is Chris Fulop here with a deck tech for my Mega Gardevoir deck. So, Mega Gardevoir is a card out of Steam Siege, and we're running three of those, and then the three prerequisite Gardevoir EXs, also out of Steam Siege. Mega Gardevoir has 210 hit points, making it a pretty sturdy attacker, and it has Despair Ray as its attack. Despair Ray does 110 damage, and you can discard Pokemon off of your bench to do 10 more for each Pokemon that you end up discarding. This means, with the aid of Skyfield, the stadium card that I'm running four of, I can hit up to 190 damage with this attack. It has the added benefit of being able to discard a card like Shaman EX, which otherwise would be a liability on your bench, and be able to get rid of that so it's no longer vulnerable. Mega Gardevoir also has a very nice ability, well, not ability, but aspect of it, in that it is double-typed, both being Fairy-type and Psychic-type. Fairy-type's not particularly impressive in the format at the moment, but being a psychic type attacker actually comes up quite often. Now, in order to maximize Despair Ray, we are running a pair of Dragonite EX, which are also able to be recirculated with uh, Rescue Stretcher, which we're running three of. It has an ability, Pull Up, that lets you take two basic Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand when you play it onto your bench. So, you can use Despair Ray to discard the Dragonite, and then the next turn, use a Rescue Stretcher to be able to get it back and continue to use Pull Up. Now, in order to fill up the bench, we are running three Hoopa EX. Hoopa EX has Scoundrel Ring, an ability that lets you search your deck for three Pokemon EX cards and put them into your hand. This means you're able to get an entire handful of Pokemon put into your bench to be able to maximize the damage from Despair Ray. It also makes the deck extra reliable and consistent, and lets you get out Mega Gardevoir very consistently. Now, the primary target that you're going to be getting with Hoopa EX is a Shaman EX. It has setup that allows you to draw your hand up to six cards to guarantee you have more resources every turn. Now, most decks like this, which are using the Skyfield engine and the Hoopa EXs, are going to run four Shaman EXs. I'm only running three because Rescue Stretcher and Dragonite allows me to reuse them consistently. Now, Shaman EX used to be the primary uh, consistency boosting Pokemon. Now we have Tapu Lele GX from Guardians Rising, who has Wonder Tag as an ability that when you get to put it from your hand onto your bench, you search your deck for any supporter. This allows you to always have draw power and allows you to run more situational supporters and always have access to them at a reliable time. Now, Hoopa EX can't get Tapu Lele GX because it only gets EXs and not GXs, but you're able to recirculate them off of the Stretchers and the Dragonites. Now, the final Pokemon we're running, and we do want to run a lot of Pokemon in this deck just because we need to have fodder for Despair Ray, is an Oricorio. It's almost not a Pokemon outside of the fact that you're able to use it for Despair Ray. It has an ability called Vital Dance, which lets you search your deck for energy cards, basic energy cards, and put them into your hand. This just smooths over the consistency of the deck a little bit. So, despite having all of these Pokemon... The deck does really only attack with Mega Gardevoir, and the rest of it is just there to be able to smooth out the deck and guarantee that the deck's able to function. So, moving on, we'll look at the energy cards. Mega Gardevoir runs uh, six Psychic, uh, six Fairy Energy, and one... The deck runs six Fairy Energy and one Psychic Energy, because Mega Gardevoir attacks with Psychic, uh, with Fairy Energy. Mega Gardevoir attacks with Fairy Energy, the Psychic Energy seems a little bit out of place, but the deck does run the Tapu Lele GXs, which have Tapu Cure for one Psychic Energy. That is, an, that is your GX attack that you get to use in the deck, and it heals all damage from two of your benched Pokemon. So, if you end up accumulating a little bit of damage on your guys over the course of the game, you can bring up a Tapu Lele and get rid of that. Because of the fact that nothing in the deck attacks for two Fairy Energies as... Mega Gardevoir's Despair Ray costs a Fairy Energy and a Colorless, you're never going to be punished for drawing only the Psychic Energy. So it's a bit of a free inclusion. And because of the Oricorio, you're actually able to find that Psychic Energy fairly reliably. Moving on to Trainers, you can see a lot of the fairly standard supporter cards that are going to be in most decks. Now, Normally you're used to seeing more Professor Sycamores and more Ends in the decks. Because of Tapu Lele and because of the draw power from Shaman and the ability to recirculate all of those, you don't really need to run as many supporters as you normally would. In addition to this, 
you do also have access to four VS Seekers. Now, I mentioned earlier how Tapu Lele allows you to play some more situational supporters. So let's look at those. We have a Hex Maniac, a Mallow, a Teammates, and a Skyla. Hex Maniac is really strong against all the ability reliant decks, and it's a bit of a silver bullet for certain popular archetypes like Metagross and the uh, Vicavolt deck, and it's good against uh, Greninja and Volcanion. Um, the other three supporters allow you to search your deck for specific cards. When you have a deck that is running as many Shaman EX as this deck does, you're not necessarily as worried about card quantity as you are about specific cards being able to be grabbed when you need them to. Now, all of them kind of serve a similar function. Mallow allows you to search your deck for two cards and put them on top of it, and then if you follow that up with Shaman EX's setup, you draw them immediately into your hand. So this allows you to have access to even your more difficult to acquire cards from your deck. Teammates lets you just take two cards directly into your hand, but it requires you to get something knocked out. Because Mega Gardevoir has such high hit points, that doesn't happen all that often. So, Teammates is a little less reliable, but when you have access to it and the conditions are met, it's probably your best draw card in the deck. Skyla is something you play on the first turn. It can get you a Skyfield, it can get you a Spirit Link, it can get you an Ultra Ball, which will get you a Hoopa, which kind of just sets everything else up from there. It's a little more limited than the other two in terms of what it can grab, but it also is the easiest to be able to pull off. So. Next up we have four Ultra Balls, which is pretty much a standard in every deck. It can get you uh, Hoopa EX, which pretty much just sets up the rest of your deck. It's just such a powerful card that every deck's going to run four of them. Then we have the four Spirit Links, which are just to be able to get out your Mega Guard or consistently. We have four Sky Fields, which allow you to fill your bench up to eight Pokemon instead of five, and it's a stadium card. It's kind of the linchpin that holds the deck together to allow Mega Gardevoir to be able to deal enough damage. Having such a wide bench lets the like Hoopa EX strategy really flourish, because you can just consistently fill your bench up. And this deck's even better with that, because it's also able to discard the cards that are otherwise going to be dead weight on your bench. Now, one of the benefits of Mega Gardevoir being a Mega Pokemon is that you get access to Mega Turbo. As a result, this item card, which lets you take a basic energy card from your discard pile and attach it to one of your Mega Pokemon, allows you to power up a Mega Gardevoir, which only requires one Fairy Energy and one Colorless Energy, in one turn. This makes it so that you can't really fall behind in the span of a game. Next up, we have three Rescue Stretchers, which is higher than most decks are going to end up running. The problem is that in this deck, it, the card is just so impressive. When you use Despair Ray, you can discard a Tapu Lele, a Shaman, and a Dragonite EX, and play a Rescue Stretcher to grab the Dragonite, which will then allow you to grab both the Shaman and the Tapu Lele, which when you play those guys down, can give you any supporter, and then fill your hand back up to six cards. It ends up being better than any other supporter in terms of being able to give you draw power as the game goes on. The card is just incredible and really glues the deck together. Next up we have two switch and escape rope. Uh, this is a deck that has a lot of Pokemon that sit on the bench that have high retreat costs and you need to be able to get Mega Gardevoir active. If you open with a Dragon IDX it has three retreat cost. You need to have some way of being able to get those to the bench reliably. I'm going for these specific cards over Float Stones, which is kind of the norm for these type of decks, because a lot of times I'm going to want to bench a Mega Gardevoir, and those are going to have their Spirit Links on it. So you can't attach two tools to that Pokemon, so you need to have slightly less efficient switching cards that are able to work with the Spirit Links. Plus, because of the fact that you end up actually using Despair Ray on a damaged Mega Gardevoir often to be able to prevent it from being... Lysander later to be knocked out. You want to have access to be able to use cards besides Floatstone to be able to get them benched. The Escape Rope is somewhat useful in the fact that it can send a high hit point Pokemon to the bench to be... To... Escape Rope is somewhat useful because when you use it, you can actually take a Pokemon that you would not be able to knock out otherwise and send it back to the bench. So, if your opponent has one Pokemon that is not able to be knocked out by your Despair Ray and a bench full of vulnerable Pokemon, it likes, acts somewhat like a Lysander in that regard, and that it lets you get a knockout on that turn. Because we have so much search in the deck, diversifying that ends up being worthwhile. 
finally, we have a Field Blower. Field Blower is the newest addition to this deck, but it is really important when playing against Garbodor, as this deck's entire engine is really built around being able to use abilities. If Garbodor is in play and prevents you from being able to use those, the deck just doesn't set up anymore. You really only need one turn per game to be able to break out of that, especially since you want to follow it up with actually being able to knock out that Garbodor. There aren't many decks in the format right now that are running multiple copies of Garbotoxin Garbodor out of Breakpoint, which is the one that you have to worry about, so you can usually keep it under control. It also is useful against Fighting Fury Belt, a card which hasn't seen as much play since the printing of Choice Band, but after Intercontinentals in the but after North American Intercontinentals, the deck the card saw a bit of a resurgence in Ryan Sablehouse's Volcanian deck, and this does actually help when dealing with that card. It's one of the reasons why I really like playing with Mega Gardevoir is that it is incredibly powerful against most of the top tier decks right now, such as Drampa Garbodor, which did win that Intercontinentals, and against Zoroark, which is one of the top decks going into that tournament. It is strong against Vespaquin, which is a deck that isn't seeing as much play now as it had before. The decks that most of the top players are really hyping up going into recent events, this deck is strong against. And the decks that it struggles with, such as Greninja and Decidueye, hadn't seen as much play. Now, those cards are starting to see a little bit more of a resurgence, so how those end up playing out in the future is going to determine whether this deck would be a good choice right now or not. Nonetheless, it's an incredibly fun deck to play. It's very consistent, and it's a deck that a lot of players are not expecting to play against right now. So if you're looking to mix it up a little bit, I suggest giving Mega Gardevoir a spin.